So Herbert Samuel, he, he comes to Israel and within a week of arriving in Israel, he does something really radical. He comes to the Chorva synagogue in the old city of Jerusalem and they say, oh, you're the high commissioner of Palestine. You represent the British, but you're a Jew. Would you honor us by reading the Haftarah portion? So there are seven Haftarot or seven prophets portions, which are called the sections of comfort. And it begins with this section, chapter 40, verse 1. Um, which, you know, starts here, it says, Nachamu, nachamu ami, comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. And so why is this the sections of comfort, the seven sections of comfort? Because in the traditional reading cycle in, in the rabbinical synagogues, these are the seven prophets portions read from Tisha B'Av to Rosh Hashanah. Now, that, what means? Is, that means the ninth day of the fifth Hebrew month, which the rabbis call Tisha, ninth of Av. They call it by the Babylonian name Av, ninth of Av until Yom Teruah, which they call Rosh Hashanah, the day of uh, shouting or trumpets, they call it the head of the year. So why do you have seven sec sessions between the ninth of Av and Rosh Hashanah? Because according to uh, rabbinical tradition, both the first and second temples mm -hmm. were destroyed in the, on the ninth of Av, one, the first one in, in um, well, they give a different date. But historians say 586 BCE and 70 AD for the second temple. Now I say by tradition because in the Tanakh we're actually told that that the city of Jerusalem burned from the 7th to the 10th for four days um, in, in the first temple. And then Josephus tells us it actually burnt in the 10th. So, but whatever, the 9th is close enough. So the 9th of Av is, is and according Wait, to... You're telling me the tradition's not 100% right? Well, so it's interesting. So what happened on the 9th of Av that actually happened was the defeat of the Bar Kokhba uprising in 135 AD. So the rabbi said, oh, that's the 9th of Av. These other things are like the 7th, the 10th. We're just going to... Backtrack that. Backtrack that and keep a straight line and come up with a bunch of things that happened on the 9th of Av, even though they were the 10th or the 7th. You know, what's a few days between me and you? Um, as Abraham said to Ephraim. <laughs> so long story short, um, 9th of Av is by tradition when the temp temples were destroyed and the Bar Kokhba revolt was put down, etc., and a bunch of other things. Um, and so from the 9th of Av, the sh all, every Shabbat from the 9th of Av until Rosh Hashanah, they read seven Haftarot, seven prophet sections, which are from the comfort portions of Isaiah uh, chapters 40 through 66. Remember, we talked about mm -hmm. Isaiah has three sections. There's the rebuke, there's the warning if you don't obey the rebuke, and there's the, the, um, the uh, you know, the, um, the comfort. And, and really the concept here is, is there's this, I guess there's this concept of we're going from destruction, which is represented by the ninth of Av, to Rosh Hashanah or the day of the trumpets when we blow the shofar for the redemption. Mm -hmm. And so this, these prophecies are getting us through, you know, it's, it's the, they're getting us from the destruction of the temple through the exile to the final redemption symbolically. And so the annual, this annual reading of the cycle in the rabbinical tradition echoes the patterns of prophetic history. That's okay. the idea. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I would like to read the first verse like this, if it's okay. Sure. Nehemiah, Nehemiah. My people says your God. <laughs> no, I'm telling you folks, I want to read it that way. Nehemiah, why would, look, if I wanted to create something like that, if I wanted to, how close would I be? Those first two words, how close is it to your name? Okay, so my name is Nehemiah, which mm. is, means Yah comforts, Yehovah mm. comforts. And it's mm. from the same, this is the word of the week, obviously, Nachamu. Nachamu. You mean obviously? It has to be. <laughs> the, the next seven portions, this and the next six portions after are based on this word. Yeah. Nachamu means comfort. Um, and, and technically it's what we call an imperative. It's like, go, walk, sit, you know, yep. command. Um, and so nachamu is the plural. Mm -hmm. It really is comfort ye, you know, mm -hmm. y'all. Comfort all y'all. Comfort all y'all. Comfort all y'all, my people, says your God. So you're supposed to be walking in your name. You're supposed yeah. to be a guy of comfort. Mm. I'm sitting down here in the sub-basement. You're not and comfortable. I'm not comfortable. <laughs> I'm not comfortable at all. <laughs> well, I want to comfort people with the word of God. And sometimes giving them the word of God makes them uncomfortable. And, so, and that's okay because in the end it will comfort so, them. So really that it. kind of fits. We're so, doing the word of God. In the root is nun chet mem. Nun yeah. chet mem as in Nehemiah or Nachamu. Comfort, comfort, my comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. And I don't know if you know this, but this is actually a really important verse, mm. a really important, first of all, it's the opening of chapters 40 through 66. Mm -hmm. um, but this is actually, this is one of my favorite verses in the Tanakh. I know you make fun of me, but really this is in the top 50 favorite it's gotta verses. It's got to be your name. Root of your name is twice. Not just because my name. So I want to I share a very interesting event in Jewish history that happened related to this verse. May I do that? Please do. Okay. This is something that happened on July 31st, 1920. Mm -hmm. Now, between 1517 and 1917, the Turks rule Israel. Mm -hmm. 1917, the, the British fight the Turks, and they gradually drive the Turks out 
Finally, in 1920, they appoint the first British High Commission, what's called the first High Commissioner of Palestine mm -hmm. under the British. Now, when they're saying Palestine, they're not thinking Palestinian Arabs. What they're thinking is the um, the Romans called Judea. They renamed it in 135 AD. They renamed it uh, Palestina mm -hmm. in, Ro in Latin. And then the Arabs called it Philistine. And now the British are calling it Palestine. Um, and Palestinians at, at this point in history are Jews who live in Palestine. Mm -hmm. um, so the first High Commissioner of Palestine under the British rule – he, his name was Herbert Samuel, mm -hmm. and he was a Jew. He mm -hmm. was a British Jew. And um, and this was considered a really big deal because Herbert Samuel, he's the first Jewish ruler over Israel in 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. And you say, oh, he wasn't you know really Jewish. He, I mean, he was Jewish, but he was British, right? Mm -hmm. But think about the man I'm named after, Nehemiah. He was the guy who held the cup for the king of Persia. Mm -hmm. So he was a Persian governor, mm -hmm. the Nehemiah I'm named after. He was a Persian royal official. And so Herbert Samuel is seen as a latter-day Nehemiah, mm -hmm. a latter-day Zerubbabel as mm -hmm. well, who is also a, a Persian official. Um, so Herbert Samuel, he, he comes to Israel, and within a week of arriving in Israel, he does something really radical. He comes to the Chorva Synagogue in the old city of Jerusalem, and they say, oh, you're the high commissioner of Palestine. You represent the British, but you're a Jew. Would you honor us by reading the Haftarah portion? Mm. And he comes and he stands up on the platform, the bima, and he begins to read, Nachamu, Nachamu Ami, <laughs> be comforted, be comforted by people. <laughs> and imagine this. No, no, no. This, this no, no. is the, the Where's that Where is that synagogue? Jewish, <laughs> what do you mean? This is the one. central synagogue in the old city of Jerusalem in the Jewish quarter. You look at the old city of Jerusalem from any angle and you see the Jewish quarter. And the first thing you see is the Chorva synagogue. It is the heart. Of the synagogues in the old, obviously the heart of the old city is is the Western Wall, but yeah. of the Jewish quarter, which is up on a hill above the the, mm -hmm. the Western Wall, um, the heart of the old, of the Jewish quarter is the Chorva Synagogue. To this very, it was actually wow. it was destroyed by the the Jordanians. They recently rebuilt it, and you see this dome from everywhere. Mm -hmm. You see the old city. So imagine that. So Herbert Samuel. He uh, he comes and he he reads this. Can you imagine this? Imagine you're a Jew and you're sitting in the audience and you've been living in Israel for years and you're ruled by these Turks who treat you like a second class citizen. By law, as a Jew, you were a second class citizen under the uh, under the Muslims. There's a great, um, not great, a tragic account about um, this um, this this Muslim ruler over there where he sentences one of his people to death for breaking the law and somebody comes into the before the, the Sultan. He says, but the Jew, that Jew did the same thing. He said, oh, well, let's kill the Jew then. We don't want to kill one of our own. We got to make an example of somebody. Let's kill the Jew. That's what it was like under Muslim rule. And now all of a sudden there's a Jew who's the first governor of Israel in 2000 years. And he comes and he reads, be comforted, be comforted, my people. You, you, this is no small thing. I want to, now the there was a man who was present named Eliezer ben Yehuda. No, he wasn't there. He was there in the synagogue. Oh, I, he, he was there in the synagogue. Oh, Eliezer ben Yehuda is the Jew who almost single-handedly revived the Hebrew language. Absolutely. He arrived in Israel in 1880, and he started speaking Hebrew, and people thought he was crazy. Yes. This was the language of synagogue. It was the language of, you know, when you would study Torah, you wouldn't speak it in the street. And he he actually, his son was the first native Hebrew speaker in um, yes. over a thousand years, yes. or thou something like a thousand yes. years. And by... 1920, there's an entire generation who was raised up speaking Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And um, and he came to the synagogue. And now you have to wow. understand something about Ben Yehuda. He was a secular Jew. In fact, he was excommunicated by the rabbis, which is a really big deal. So they actually formally excommunicated Eliezer Ben Yehuda um, for being – he was at, he Lama. wasn't just secular. He was anti-religious. Okay. He said, you religious people kept us in exile for 2,000 years. It's time to throw off the shackles of the exile and return to our homeland and speak our language. And they said, heretic. We must speak you know, the language we spoke in exile. And, and there were Jews in Israel who were speaking Yiddish, which is a dialect of German. And other Jews who were speaking Arabic, other Jews who were speaking Turkish. They said, we'll speak any language but not Hebrew. Eliezer ben Yehuda changed it. Mm. So he shows up at the synagogue. Uh, and this is the first time he'd been at synagogue in years. And why was he there? Because he knew the high commissioner was coming there. And it was the first Shabbat after the, the Herbert Samuel arrived. And here's what he wrote to his wife, whose name was Beatty. Beatty was actually her, her nickname, her loving nickname. It means my daughter mm -hmm. or my lady. He says, our friend, the high commissioner, oh, I'm getting emotional. Our friend, the high commissioner read from the Torah, Beatty. He read those lines from Isaiah, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. As he read them, I could not control myself. I cried, I cried, BT, and I guess people saw me. I'm sure they wondered why I was there. 
For nearly 40 years, I have been working to separate religion from state, haven't I? This is Eliezer ben Yehuda writing. I did it because I wanted Israel to be able to develop freely so that those who are Orthodox and those who are free thinkers could join in the resurrection of Israel. Only in that way could our new state ever be strong. He goes on, I suppose some people will think that now I am a traitor to my own ideas. They are always accusing me of that. I still believe we must keep our religion and our state apart. But BT, it is no, it is so good a thing to see a British high commissioner standing in the synagogue reading from the Torah. Wow. Um, wow. Now, <laughs> this is... I can't emphasize how huge this was. Um, you know, Herbert Samuel's reading of this particular... Pro- of all the prophecies, he, he just happened to show up in Israel, in Palestine, in Jerusalem that week. And this was the first week he comes to the synagogue. And it was quite literally seen as the official pronouncement of the end of the third exile. The, mm. Him reading these words in the synagogue. And we had three exiles, 400 years in Egypt, 70 years in Babylon, 1,850 years at the hands of Rome. This is how the Jews of the time described it. Mm. And Ben Yehuda, this secular anti-religious Jew, he's, his reacting so strongly was seen as a confirmation of the gravity of this event. And he hears a witness who was there in the synagogue wrote as follows. He says, I was in... <laughs> he says, I was in the Chorva synagogue the day the end of the third... <sighs> Can't he read this? He says, I was in the Chorva synagogue the day the end of the third exile was officially pronounced. <laughs> hmm. Again, people, this is um, this is uh, July 31st, 1920, Shabbat, the old city of Jerusalem. The British high commissioner is reading, comfort you come from my people. He says, Ben Yehuda was also there. This is a witness who saw him. I was near enough to see him so I could, near enough to him so I could see the tears streaming down his face. I saw the look in his eyes. I knew then what I had always suspected. Down underneath it all, Ben Yehuda had a deeply religious soul. He has fought superstition and bigotry and fanaticism, but that does not mean he is not a good and humble man. Mm. So, wow. Um, this is a big deal. This prophecy for 2,000 years kept Jews, gave them some sense of hope. And then for this to be read in this, and imagine the hopes around this. We've been ruled by the Muslims for, for over a, for a thousand years. We had the Crusaders and the Muslims and, and, and the Turks. And and then the British came and they, and you remember the background of the British here of invading Israel is they made the Balfour Declaration mm-hmm. in which they declared that um, Palestine would be the homeland of the Jewish people. They, they recognized what God had already commanded. Mm-hmm. And then during the negotiations, um, with the League of Nations, which gave the British official international recognition over so-called Palestine. The purpose of the, pa- of the Palestine mandate was to establish a Jewish home in, in mm-hmm. Israel. Mm-hmm. And the first commissioner is, is a Jew. And he's reading in the synagogue. And even this anti-religious Jew, his heart is just stirred up by these words. Mm. Be comforted, be comforted, my people, coming from the first Jewish ruler in 2000 years. Uh, and, and, you know, it's interesting, too, because now we're talking about that, which is real history. You know, this is prophecy for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I really, I really appreciate you sharing that story, Nehemiah, because there's so many levels that um, that are amazing. Um, but the other thing that's amazing is that we've had this idea uh, in the seminaries. We've taught in the seminaries that there are two Isaiahs. That the one that we talked about in the first part is different than this one because this one is just two as we call them, Nehemiah, the eagle eye prophet. He sees too clear for him to be able to be prophesying now in 40 verse 1 about the future. And then you bring that story. I mean, is that what Isaiah saw? Did you see that plus other things? I mean, it's a, yeah. it's like, it's like, well, and, and can yeah. I tell you how this is seen even to this day by many mm-hmm. Jews? So I actually grew up being taught that we were in a period of history called Atchalta de Geulta, the beginning of the redemption. Mm-hmm. And you could argue whether it began in 1917 with the invasion of the British or it began on July 31st, 1920 with the reading of this prophecy. But many mm-hmm. Jews believe that the redemption is described in a number of places in prophecy about, uh, as the uh, as the birth pangs. Mm-hmm. It talks about a woman uh, in travail giving mm-hmm. birth. And if you think about birth pangs, uh, and you've had three sons. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Were you in the room? Or were you hiding? I was absolutely in the room. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, so if you think about birth pangs, so it, it's a process. The mm-hmm. baby doesn't get born in one second, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it could be many hours depending on, you know, the woman. And so the, many Jews look at this and say, we are currently in the birth pangs of the Messiah. That's what it's called. And, that, and uh, that's birth pangs of the Messiah. I've talked about that before, I think. And, and you know, when we look and we say, oh, you know, wait a minute. After this, there was the Holocaust. Yeah, it hurts. Mm-hmm. 
You know, it's not, there's I, wars, I, there's I, pain. I, 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 this I would, is the birth pangs of the Messiah. But, but what, what, what's so powerful to me is when, when verse 2 says, if I can't please, please, can I please? Oh my gosh, I'll try to speak. Cry. No, please cry as much as you speak want. Speak to the beautiful. heart of Jerusalem. Let me, let me, I won't, yeah, okay, so speak. Proclaim to her. Go on, you read it. <laughs> and call out to her that her, and, 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 and here's the word that they're using here, uh, Sava, which is, you know, when you use it, Savaot, yeah. but it says that her warfare has ended. Now think about this. So Isaiah's, Isaiah's there, and you know, like this, they say, so it's too, it's too, it's too clear. It's too straightforward. It's too prophetic for him. It's got to be a different Isaiah for him to say that. And, and you just brought this example. And what was going on in the, in, 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 in the 17, 1917, 1920, going on into what Israel declaring itself as this war, 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 you know, and then say her war is still going on. Yeah. And war is still going on. That's why it's the beginning. It goes from warfare to that her iniquity has been removed. And then it goes on to say, and you know, you talked about birth pangs that she's received of Yehovah's hand. And I, I, I don't know if this is, can this be correct? Hmm. That she's received dual or double, double, I mean, double for all her sins. Man, oh man! And and that of course, you know, references Exodus twenty two seven verse mm-hmm. six in the Hebrew, mm-hmm. where if you steal, you actually have to pay back double. Mm-hmm. And and that you know that's that metaphorically now uh, Israel is getting you know being paid back double for her iniquities. Mm-hmm. Wow! And isn't that the truth? Look at the Holocaust. Look at all the suffering that we've gone mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. Let's pray. Yehovah Malkenu, Yehovah our King. Yehovah, I pray that you reveal your holy arm, your strength, before the eyes of all the nations. Yehovah, I pray that that Yeshua'at Eloheinu, the Yeshua of our God, the salvation of our God, be seen to the ends of the earth. Yehovah, I pray that you awake your people, and you wake all those who, who deep in their heart, they, they yearn for God, whether they understand you or don't understand you, whether they know your name or don't know your name that you awaken them and they arise and they shake off the dust of tradition and they take off the collar of man-made religion and they and they and they come towards you they they return like a dog to his owner and they come to you and they and they embrace you Yehovah and they and they call upon your name mm-hmm. and they love your name and they love your Torah Yehovah I pray that they hear the good news of your salvation and they hear that Yehovah has returned to Zion. Mm-hmm. Your God has begun to reign as king. May this be soon. Amen. Amen. Thank you for supporting Nehemiah's Makor Hebrew Foundation. Learn more at NehemiahsWall.com.